was. Just some, uh, just a little uh, video introduction, improvisation. So uh, welcome everybody. So I'm kind of shooting this at night, as you can tell probably by the lighting. Uh, but I saw Bo's latest video where he was talking about some uh, psych cheapies, if you want to call it that, or uh, also known as, you know, maybe just a gateway to uh, introducing some people to some cheap psychedelia, you know, to get the ball rolling, to get you started on the, the endless trip, if you want to call it that. It's got plenty of names, so uh, anyways, um, over time, you know, I've got to learn a lot of uh, different cheap albums that are kind of like swept under the rug or uh, just don't have enough, you know, reception to them or people just not hip to these sort of albums. So uh, there are some famous ones in here, but there's also, you know, just a mixed bag of things. But I got a large stack here, so be prepared. <laughs> so I got this stack and then plus a quarter a quarter of this stack left, uh, which I'll pick up after this stack. So um, I'm going to fly through them fairly fast, as obvious. So uh, I think Bo is kind of looking forward to this video because I just read his comment once I started filming this. So, um, But this is not just for, uh, you know, necessarily just psych collectors, but just anyone that wants to uh, find out about some as what they call cheap heat um, so it's like you know some good stuff that you can pick up for uh, generally um, I picked out stuff that's probably worth you know you can pick up clean copies for between 10 and 20 bucks if you're lucky or if you just wait down the road but generally this is uh, kind of all over the place as far as prices but generally uh, 10 bucks to 10 to 20 bucks so I had to start off with uh, probably one of the best cheapies out there, and that is the Moody Blues. Uh, I think it's one of their finest records, In Search of the Lost Chord. Um, this one, this copy's kind of beat, but you can find them, find nice copies, and this has got the goods. I mean, Timothy Leary, um, House of Four Doors, this has got some good stuff. Ride My Seesaw, great Mellotron early progressive pop music. This is one that came to mind right away when I think of cheapies that are very good. So you guys might remember uh, Keith who had the hit uh, 98.6. Uh, this is his last album on RCA. This is kind of where he gets a little ambitious and starts putting some Baroque pop. There's a little bit of fuzz guitar throughout in this one and just incredible songwriting and production. The Adventures of Keith. Uh, I think I picked this up for six bucks. This is a really good uh, cheap heat, if you want to call it that. Um, and also, some of these first albums are what came to mind first, so that's why I picked them uh, to show off first. This one, this one surprisingly sold pretty well for its time, and this is uh, Lee Michaels, Carnival of Life. It's kind of hard to find a nice copy sometimes, but uh, they're out there. And you can score this for 10 bucks. And this has got some really surprisingly well, uh, you know, nice uh, fuzz guitar throughout. And it's got the guitarist from Euphoria, who uh, I forget his name, but he was on the uh, Euphoria album on Capitol. Um, if I can find it quick, Hamilton Watt. So it's got some good stuff before he uh, had his hit. Um, if you know what I mean that song so uh, speaking of like sunshiny not necessarily bubble gum it's it's a lot more uh, well polished than that but it's nice sunshine pop a uh, broke pop and this is Gary Lewis with the playboys and this is out album uh, listen this is very uh, you can pick this up for nothing and this is fantastic pop music um, angel on the corner Young and Carefree, Bring the Whole Family. It's got some nice production to it and uh, never gets talked about. This is surprisingly very good. As far as a uh, hard rock, one and done sort of album, this is English Gypsy and you can get this for dirt cheap. And 
I'm kind of surprised you can. It's on the DECA label. This is a US copy, but I think the UK copies are a little more desirable as always, but uh, English Gypsy. This has got some uh, good hard rock. Um, pretty minimal on the psych, but it's uh, more of a hard rock, kind of bluesy. Very good though. Uh, as far as pop psych goes, I had to show this band Colors, and this one's a lot better than their second one, I, I feel. Uh, it's got kind of Beatlesque vocal pop, but it's also got some, uh, of course, nice uh, light psych elements thrown in. It's pretty good. Brother Lou's Love Colony. Uh, and of course, I had to show this one too. I was like, yeah, this one's still uh, surprisingly, you know, very good for what it is, you know, featuring Noel Redding. And it doesn't get the same rep as, you know, Road as far as uh, considered like a hard rock or heavy psych classic, but it's got this kind of mellowness to it that gets overlooked. It's got this kind of mellow folk rock, and uh, it's very good. So Fat Mattress, I don't even know if I said the name yet, <laughs> but yeah, Fat Mattress, that can find you for 10 bucks. Um, it's very, very good. Put it in sleep later. Got a ton of LPs to go through. So the Tingling Mother Circus, Circus of the Mind, is that what it is? Yeah. Uh, it's kind of quirky, kind of fun, sort of like split level, which I also have in the stack. Uh, it's very good. Uh, this one, UK copies are pretty pricey, as you can imagine, but the US copies of Blonde, this is, this is actually uh, Tages, and then they formed into Blonde. It's got some fantastic, like, early power pop moves, and um, very nice vocals, and songwriting is just out of this world strong, as far as pop music. With It's pop, but it's got a lot of... Uh, good rocking mixed in as well um i always consider this a great cheapy jame or jame which is uh which has a what's his name john phillips kind of uh, producing this and there's a whole backstory on this band which is pretty good and uh, this is fantastic uh very english sounding baroque pop but it's also just just simple pop rock but done very well Really tight musicianship and um, very memorable songs. This one's kind of a go-to album. I believe this is still a cheapie, and as far as singer-songwriters go, this is great. Tim Hollier, Message to a Harlequin. Uh, it's kind of Baroque pop, again, folk pop influenced, and sort of Donovan-esque, but it, it's its own thing. This is... Uh, Fantastic. This one might be a little on the pricier edge. This is, kind of goes ranges from 15 to 25, but um, I've seen it go for like as cheap as five to 10 bucks. Pigeon, this is Joe Bryant's first band. This is one of my all time favorites. If you love a uh, harpsichord driven pop psych uh, with a little progressive element, this is one to look into. Um, <clears throat> this is a fantastic cheapy. This one and their second album, uh, Brotherhood, which is actually Paul Revere and the Raiders. Um, or at least most of the members are. This is their little psych effort, if you want to call it that. They kind of look clean cut on the cover. And it is, but it's got some uh, good moments. Jump Out the Window, which isn't the best suggestive title, but <laughs> it's a cool track. Uh, this is the album I was trying to send, if Hannah happens to see this, this is the extra copy I had of uh, Glass Prism. This is the one I was trying to send you, um, of Joy and Sorrow, and this is, both their albums are pretty cheap, so uh, I got this sealed for eight bucks. Um, it was one of the very first that I picked up on, on eBay, so it's kind of, uh, they kind of sound like a bar band, like they played a lot of clubs, but got some cool uh, Wicked Psych in it, so it's pretty cool. Nice cheapy. Um, Andy Kim, who had some hits. This is kind of his effort. Um, and surprisingly really cheap. It's on the Steed label. Uh, it's got some cool psych, 
psych effects on here. Uh, I think it's Baby While We're Young, While You're Young. It's got that kind of Leslie speaker effect in the vocals, some fuzz thrown, thrown in. Please Be True. Um, I don't listen to this a whole lot, but it's it's good. If you uh, find it for five bucks or less, try goes for that. This is one that uh, really gets swept under the radar as well. East on Capitol, a band that formed in Japan. And when you hear the sounds off this thing, it's a just amazing psych folk uh, with some like, you know, that Eastern flavor to it. And uh, surprisingly uh, very affordable. So East. As far as uh, country rock goes, Tails, some quality uh, country rock. You always see cheap, and then of course we all probably know this one, Asylum Choir, Leon Russell. It's got some good moments in it. They're not entirely all great, but there's some hidden gems in here. And then of course Sonny's uh, drug-influenced effort with his uh, interview interviews and yeah I didn't find it for 44 cents but it was like probably a dollar <laughs> when I found this I found this in Sioux City but you can find this about anywhere kind of hard to find in good shape I imagine but uh, this one I don't have a cover to but if you thought the guess who were you know just a classic rock band uh, you should check their debut out this is what I got um, these eyes or wait, it's Wheatfield Soul. Never mind. Um, if I can get it in there. I uh, got this album cheap. I mean, without the sleeve, obviously. But this is one you can pick up for probably under 10 bucks. And they kind of psych out. And there's some Doors influence on here. Uh, nice fuzz. So it's a, it's a nice cheapie. And then if you thought, you know, this band was just bubblegum, you're mistaken because uh you know what's their name the k and k team really uh, promoted this band as bubblegum but the band themselves really uh kind of explored their own roots in the music and you got tracks like into this time first grade reader the time you spent with me and this is one of the better cheapies out there as far as uh really quality psych rock kind of in the vein of you know what the lemon pipers did so very cool and you can pick this dirt cheap and then we got the split level a nice vocal pop um i showed this one recently since i recently acquired it uh, very ambitious uh, baroque pop um kind of with this kind of religious tone maybe but it's all very good um nice arrangements and I think Bo showed the, the debut of this band. I only have this one by them, Blues Magoo's Electric Comic Book. Of course, it is probably more desirable with the comic book, but this one's not half that, and I got this for like eight bucks. So this is some quality, uh, you know, of the era, very, very of the era and definitive garage site. Now, I think I showed this, and then uh, Sean picked up on this, I believe. The Arbors, um, I Can't Quit Her, and The Letter. They're kind of more known for, you know, being a vocal a vocal group, a lot like uh, the Everly Brothers or, you know, kind of bands of that weight. But this is kind of where they uh, have a backing band or something, you know, kind of helping these guys out, kind of psych their sound out, you know, kind of explore a little more. And some cool tracks on here, cool uh, cover versions of, like, Touch Me and Hey Joe, probably the best version of Hey Joe. So, uh, Gil and Garnett and the Gentle Rain, uh, Salido Helipad or Heliport. Um, this is probably better than their debut album, I would say. Th this has got some goods on here. Um, we're checking out on the Columbia label. So, uh, it's kind of like a San Francisco site influenced acid rock but it's got some folky elements as well i believe this is still a cheapie steve baron quartet the mother of us all it's on the tetragrammatone label this has kind of uh, got a lot of mixed styles thrown in like jazz and 
um, folk influence, a little blues, and some some rocking moments as well. So it's got a all-in-one package on that one. This one never gets talked about, but it's got some uh, nice progressive, kind of heavy progressive rock elements. And this is Spindrift, Liberate. This is kind of based on a uh, Broadway play or something, and uh, this one's pretty cheap, like seven to ten bucks. And uh, there's some good moments on here. Not all of it's great, but uh, the good moments are kind of sprinkled within, and it gets kind of progressive and sort of in a hard rock vein. Probably one of the best cheapies on Tower Records, uh, Timothy Clover. It's kind of in a vein of like, um, I don't know, it's kind of hard to describe, but it's got this kind of loose concept going throughout, but I would say Side 2 is the best. It's got some nice quality Baroque, Baroque and Folk Pop. Um, then it's also got the uh, last track, Teardrop Mobile, is worth, worth checking out for that price. And I found this at a thrift store in Neely, or Neely, Nebraska, and <laughs> the most unlikely place. This is Down That Country Road by Future. And what a find this was. I was really happy to find this, even though it is pretty cheap. It's kind of more of a, again, country rock. But it's got that kind of cosmic, floaty sound within it. So it's on the Shamley label, which was a subsidiary of the Uni label, or Universal. Then he also showed some Monkeys albums, so I figured I'd show this one. Pisces, Aquarius, Capricorn, and Jones Limited. This is kind of where they uh, start to, you know, kind of get their sound a little more grooving and toward that uh, psych 60s sound. So tracks like Star Collector, of course, and Words, Cuddly Toy. It's got some goods. I mean, the monkeys, a lot of people kind of misinterpret them sometimes, but uh, they had some some quality hits. Um, well, not even hits either. I mean, they just had some, you know, kind of kind of a reputation known as, you know, like a television band where they had a lot of comedic aspects to them, but some of their songwriting was top-notch, so. And then uh, Buffy St. Marie, as far as like a singer-songwriter folk site, this is some good stuff. Uh, it does rock out in a couple tracks, Eliminations. This is probably one of her better albums. It's on the Vanguard label. And that's that one stack alone, so uh, I'll show the next one here. Sorry I'm not explaining these thoroughly in depth, but Hopefully uh, you guys can look all these up after and just kind of review the video. But he also showed this one, It's a Beautiful Day. One of the best cheapies for sure. I mean, this band probably didn't get their due like Jefferson Airplane did, but this is, um, I mean, this one kind of blew me away when I first revisited this, you know, this year. Um, I was really, really surprised caught me off guard there so um i've spotted this online for cheap it's i tried finding a copy for like 12 bucks i finally found one but they can range from 12 to 15 at first and this is the bermuda jam it's a one and done effort um it's got a lot of mixed mixed material a lot of studio effects thrown in uh, but it's mostly known for uh one of the most mind-bending tracks ever uh, good trip lollipop so, worth the price of admission alone on that one. Uh, Lord Such and Heavy Friends. As far as like uh, really crunching hard rock, but if you want to say the vocals are in bad taste, you know, because how Lord Such sound, the music backing this is very good. It's got some members of Led Zeppelin in it and uh, Jeff Beck. So, it's a cool piece. And this one, of course, this is one of the best discoveries this year for me. I, I wish I had listened to this album sooner, but um, Cry and Shame Synthesis, wow. I mean, this is something, the quality of it, I just can't believe it's not as like sought after as something like The Millennium, since it's on the same label. Uh, it's that good. It sounds like a Kurt Boucher sort of production, so... Uh, very very impressed by this one this year and found me for seven bucks so 
and that goes for any crying shames albums they're uh they'll get you through a tight spot and then of course uh i i would imagine this is still a cheap one or cheaper blue cheer and i was just thinking about this recently um you know just imagine if this was a private press back in its day this thing would go for like a grand easily if it was on a small label um, but thankfully Phillips picked them up and kind of widely distributed this band so um, you know and you could probably find nice copies for about 20 bucks at least so very good one blue cheer and uh, then I think Bo showed this one spirit I also picked this up for four bucks and the condition is always kind of hard to find these in VG plus shape I could upgrade to this one but it played pretty well so I'm happy at the moment and I I know you guys probably know me for uh, applauding this album a whole lot but I mean it when I say this is probably one of my more uh, favorite titles on uni the East Side Kids and Tiger and the Lamb and I even scored a second copy just to give it to someone and I got it for like three bucks online this one can run you probably in this shape probably 15 bucks but this is one undiscovered gem on uni in my opinion but it gets kind of mixed mixed responses then i think this is still one a cheap one aorta on the columbia label as well this has got a mixed bag of uh, progressive and a lot of uh, zany effects thrown in um, some ideas work most of them do work but um, it, it's an ambitious one for sure not definitely not as good as their second one uh, surprisingly still cheapy on the Fontana label Morning Glory two sons worth and I think they picked this up for seven bucks and um yeah it's it's not like it's not up there with the classics but I mean it's certainly worth a listen and worth uh, putting in your collection if you're uh, you know into this sort of stuff very uh, San Francisco based psych this is one of the more better hard rock jams from the uh, late 60s time trust in men everywhere smooth ball and I showed their second album because I think it's a little it's just a tad stronger than their debut this one kind of rocks out a little more and it's very consistent so it's a very good cheapy I got two more here and then we're done so had to show the fugs um, I think this is their best album my opinion but on the reprise label and for what they're what they got going on this record as far as like songwriting and for how heavy heavier they are on this on this one uh, it's tenderness junction by the way it's not self-titled but um, you know most of these guys most people probably think of them as kind of like freak folk or kind of experimental folk this one kind of diverts from that for a second and kind of just goes in a more really acid fried psych rock direction and it's it's good i i get a kick out of this record when i play it so and then finally i think this is still a cheapy um you know i'm pretty confident it is because i picked it up for like 15 bucks and i've i've seen it online for about that same price and this is kind of one maybe you can wait on and you'll find a copy for that so uh, definitely worth it this is one of my favorites on uh, MGM Puff this is a promo copy um, again people kind of have mixed feelings about it but um, you know it's not so much garage but it's got it's kind of like a floatiness to it in a sort of uh, Beatles-esque kind of songwriting um, even though it's not like super tripped out or anything, it's got uh, it's got good time period flavor to it for sure. So uh, I think that does it. <laughs> uh, like I said, I, I probably have a few more cheapies in there in the stacks, but um, this is about the uh, majority of what I got and what I would share as far as uh, wanting to check more out and you know if. You can just sample some of the stuff online and, you know, you'll see how right I was. <laughs> this is some good good stuff here. So uh, thanks, Mo, for putting the video up and just kind of inspired me to do this. And 
Um, still waiting on stuff in the mail. Today's Veterans Day, so um, couldn't get my two uh, big items in the mail. There's one, one, well, one I probably knew I was going to get down the road. I have their debut album, but this other one, it's the, the cover's kind of water damaged, but the record is minty, and I got a good deal on it, and I can't believe I have it or I'm going to get it. So, and I'm also shipping out some packages tomorrow, so I've been making some sales. And Bill, I'm glad you enjoy your VCLT, and also King Dick, also known as Vinyl Richie, should be getting his soon. Um, I sent him some VCLT. So, it's been kind of busy here, so I'll probably explain more down the road. Um, sorry I haven't had too many live streams also. I've uh, just been kind of, I've been busy on the weekends, so if you guys watch Randy's live streams, you, uh, you know what's going on. So, anyways, we'll catch you down the road, and hope you enjoyed. Got any questions, let me know. We will see you soon.